Let's talk about Google Ads shopping campaigns, and in today's video, I wanna take you through my three top tips for setting up your campaign and also optimizing your Google shopping campaigns. Now, I do wanna stress that I'm talking about standard shopping campaigns and not smart shopping campaigns. And the reason for that is because coming up in this July, your smart shopping campaigns will automatically transition to Google's new campaign style of Performance Max campaigns. And just in case you wanna know more about your Performance Max campaigns, if you stay around to the end of this video, I will share some links with you so you can actually see how to correctly set up your Performance Max campaigns and also how you can go about optimizing your Performance Max campaigns. Now, before we get into those three best practices that you should be using for your Google Shopping campaigns, I do want to share two core beliefs that I have about Google Shopping campaigns. And the first one is, is that it's highly likely that not all of your products will actually be suitable for Google Shopping campaigns. So please don't feel like you have to include all of your products in your Google Shopping campaign. And this is especially true if you don't have a high brand recognition yet, or if you actually have a product that is more expensive than similar products in your product niche. And if you're in that situation, I do recommend that you actually try some Google search campaigns. And the reason for that is because you then have some extra headlines and descriptions that you can use to add in those things which differentiate your product from those cheaper or alternative products in your niche. Say for example, if you've got a higher product quality or better warranty or return policies, or even if you just have better rules and clear examples for why your product costs more than the competitors. And the second reason for why you may not target all of your products in your Google Shopping feed is because you may have larger resellers who are actually selling your product at a discounted price. And what you need to always be remembering with Google Shopping campaigns is you need to remember how the customer or potential customer actually sees your ads. And they are heavily price driven with the main features being your product title, an image, and then a price. So even if you've got a reseller or a competitor who's undercutting your price by even one or 2%, this can have a massive difference and actually make it so that your Google Shopping campaigns are no longer profitable. And the second thing that you need to make sure of is that you're only targeting one product with a Google Shopping feed in one campaign through your whole account. And the reason for why I wanted to discuss this is that with the introduction of Performance Max campaigns, I'm seeing a lot of scenarios where people are targeting the same product with a shopping campaign and also a Performance Max campaign. And as we know, Performance Max campaigns do also use your product data and your product feed to run shopping ads. So this is meaning that in the same account, you are targeting the same product with two different campaigns with the core issue being that if you add optimizations to one of those campaigns, you'll still be facing the same issues as to why you added in that optimization because those issues will be present in another campaign, for example, your Performance Max campaign. So it's really, really important that you're only using one campaign that uses a Google Shopping feed to target individual products. So you need to make sure that for every single individual product, you're only targeting it with one campaign, being a Google Shopping campaign, or a Performance Max campaign. But just to clarify, I have no issues at all and I actually recommend that you can target those same products with a search campaign. And the reason for that is because those search ads appear in a different section of the screen when someone conducts a Google search. Now the main point that I wanna clarify here before we go into those three best practices is that not every product will be suitable for a Google Shopping campaign. And with the vast majority of Google Shopping campaigns that I see, you see some products perform very, very well and others just never perform well. And if you continue to throw money to those poor performing products, it's just bringing the total performance down of your whole account. So with Google Shopping campaigns, never treat it like a one in, all in scenario, in that the only option is, is that you have to market all of your products in your Google Shopping campaign. Because what you wanna do is you wanna test all of your products and then just keep the ones which are performing well and providing more revenue for your business. With all that said, we're ready to get into today's teaching, but just before we do, if we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And I've been creating and optimizing profitable Google Ads campaigns since 2010. So if you wanna keep up to date with what is working in Google Ads right now, why don't you go through and give me a quick subscribe. Thank you very much and now we're ready to get into that teaching. And the first best practice that I wanna talk about for your Google shopping campaigns is making sure that you're using the correct campaign structure and also have your products set into different product groups. And this has two core benefits. 
benefits. And the first one is, is that by adding in product segmentation, it's so much easier when you go to optimize your account, the way you can actually see which products are performing well and which other products need further work. And as always, I always recommend that you filter this by cost so that you're focusing on the areas which are spending the most money. And then that way you can just quickly go through and have a look at the products or the product groups which are performing poorly and may need to be paused. And the second thing that this proper campaign structure and product segmentation allows is that if you actually have your products set across different campaigns, it allows you to use greater flexibility in your budgets. And the reason for that is because you need to remember that your budgets are set at a campaign level. So if you have some products which perform really well in the warmer months, say for example, you've got some outdoor products which you know perform way better in the hotter summer months than what they do in the cooler winter months, by setting these out into a separate campaign, you can increase the budget as you come into summer and those hotter months, and then you can decrease that budget as you come into the winter or those cooler months. And if you have all of your products in one campaign, this becomes a lot harder to do. So let me show you what this would look like. So this is the structure that you should be using for your Google Shopping campaigns, is that we have different campaigns set out for your core product groups. So in this example, where we're looking at a furniture store, we've got a campaign for sofa beds, and then a campaign for dining, and then a campaign for outdoor furniture. And then underneath each of these individual campaigns, we've got all of the relevant product groups that fit for these core product categories. And the benefit of this is, is like we discussed earlier, is say for example with your outdoor furniture, you just may know that your year on year data shows that this outdoor furniture performs better as you lead up into the summer months, say for example in spring. So it may be that when you come into spring, you actually increase this budget and keep it at that higher spending level throughout spring and summer. And then as you start to go into autumn and winter, you may lower down the budget that you're spending for this campaign because you just know that it doesn't perform as well. So by having this correct campaign segmentation, it allows you to make those decisions because you don't have all of your products just sitting under one campaign. Because as we said, this campaign level is where we actually set those budgets. And the second best practice that you always want to be incorporating into your Google Shopping campaign is to always be reviewing your search terms. So reviewing the search terms that actually trigger your shopping ads. Now while I've used Smart Shopping and also Performance Max campaigns, and I do see their value, the reason for why I prefer and always look to include some standard shopping campaigns is because you can actually see the actual search terms that trigger your ads. Now there have been some cases where I've used a standard shopping campaign in the initial stages and then transitioned it over to a Performance Max campaign once I've built out some initial audiences and also once I know the search terms that really, really work that I can add into my asset groups. But the fact remains, one of the most powerful optimizations that you can do in a standard shopping campaign is you can actually go through and review all of those individual search terms and then look to add in some new negative keywords to filter out any search terms which you know are not gonna be profitable for your products. And then when you're doing these search term audits for your shopping campaigns, if you do see some products that continually generate search terms which are not relevant for your product or your brand, you've actually got two options. One, you can continue to build out some new negative keywords so that you can filter out those searches. But if they keep on happening, what you can actually do is you can go through and review your product landing page and review the product title and also the product content to see if you can actually make some changes on that individual product page so that you're not generating those unrelated search terms. And the reason for why this is so important is because you have to remember with your shopping campaigns is that Google is grabbing the data from your product title and also from your product page. So if you've got some keywords or some content on any of those items like your headlines or even in your product description, that is the reason for why Google is targeting those unrelated search terms. So right now, I wanna show you an example of how this actually works. So right now, we're in the search term section of our shopping campaign, and what you can actually see in here is we're getting a whole heap of search terms for All Blacks, All Blacks accessories, also All Blacks merchandise. And where this is actually coming from, if we go into the product landing page, you can actually see here that we're actually marketing kids' earmuffs, but they've actually got some All Blacks branding on it. 
And if you don't know, All Blacks are a rugby union team based out of New Zealand. And the reason for why we're getting all of these unrelated search terms like All Black merchandise and just general New Zealand All Blacks terms is because in here we had in the product title this section for All Blacks. And then also in here we had more information about the New Zealand All Blacks. Now in this scenario, because there was some trademark issues, we weren't able to remove the All Black sections from here. So we actually had to pause this ad but if you're seeing this happening where you're getting a lot of search terms triggering for something which is not related to your product, you have two options. You can continue to go through and add these in as negative keywords, like we've already done in here, which is you obviously just go through, select them, and then add as a negative keyword. Or the other option is, is to actually update your product feed so that the product title doesn't say this secondary keyword anymore. And then you could also go through and update your content and your product descriptions to remove those words which are triggering in the non-related search terms. And the third and final best practice that I wanna share with you for optimizing your Google Shopping campaigns is to don't forget to optimize by devices, locations, demographics, and audiences. So remember that with Google Shopping campaigns, it's not just a matter of setting up your product feed and then checking the search terms every now and then, is that you actually can also go through and review the data and then add in some extra optimizations. So whether that would be extra bid optimizations or whether that would be to add in some extra exclusions based on the results that you're seeing by the location, the devices, and also those audience and demographic groupings. So what we're doing here with Google Shopping is that we're not only focusing our budget to spend the most on the best performing products, because what we're trying to do here is to not only increase our spending on the best performing products, but the best performing products who are searched on the best performing devices from the best performing locations by people who are part of the best performing demographics and audience groupings. So let me show you how you can actually review this data and actually go about adding in some extra bid optimizations. So when you're in your shopping campaign, you wanna be going into your locations, your devices, and also your audiences. So let's start with our locations. And then what you can do here is you actually click on the targeted location and we're gonna review this by cities. You can also do this by states. And what you wanna do is you wanna review it by the cost, and if you don't have the section in here in the columns, just add in your ROAS score or your conversion value cost. And what we're quickly looking at here is we're looking at where we're we spending the money and where we're we getting the better results. And as you can see in this campaign, all of our sales of this period have actually only come from Sydney. And as you can also see in here, is that it's only spent $90 of a total 623. So what we can actually do is we can go through some of these other areas which have had some high spending but haven't provided any conversions. And there's two options that we can actually do here, is that we could actually exclude that option, or we could actually also set in some different bid adjustments to actually lower the bidding for those areas. Now, in this example, I just wanted to show you the data that we're looking at. We're only looking at 15 days data. So before you were to exclude an area, you'd wanna be looking at at least 45 to 60 days data, but this shows you how you can actually review your location data. And then you go through and do the same thing for devices. And what we're looking at here is how your campaign performs through mobiles, computers, or tablets. And once again, the big data that I wanna be looking at is I wanna be looking at this conversion value. So not just the total conversions, because in this campaign, they do also have some product downloads active and also some store inquiries. And with this one, what you generally find is if you've got a very simple product, so it's not an expensive product, and it's a very simple choice, is that you'll generally find that that will tend to perform better on mobile phones. But sometimes you will actually get some products that perform better on computers. And this especially happens if you've got a campaign or a product which has got a high conversion value. So you can actually see here, we've got four conversions for $7,500. So an average order value of about $1,800. And because this is quite an expensive product, people are more likely to finish the sale on their computer. And the reason for that is because they wanna see some further detailed data, which may not be as easy to see on a mobile phone. So I won't do this now, but on this campaign, we are actually gonna be restricting our shopping campaign to computers just because of this high conversion value. And then the third section that you wanna be going into is your audience section. And in your audience, you can also see your audience segments and you can also see your detailed demographic groupings, which we have in here. So what we wanna do, once again, we just wanna follow that same process of reviewing it by cost. 
and then looking to see which ones are actually giving us that higher conversion value. So what you can actually see in here, a lot of these top forming categories, which are generating the clicks and the cost, aren't actually following up in this conversion value. And this is a newer campaign, so we actually do need to go through and add in some extra audience segments, because as you can see in here, we're getting a good, about 25% of our total views not coming from added audiences or demographics. So what we do in here is that we would edit these audience segments. I'm gonna select these at a campaign level. And then we can go through and start to add in some extra audiences so that we can get this data up. I won't do this right now, but what we will do is that once we actually come back and we've got this data and we start to see some audience segments which are performing well in terms of converted sales, we just can go through and add in our bid adjustment, add in a positive bid adjustment, say for example 10% or 5% or 15% depending on how high you want to take it. And what that will then do is it will add in some extra spending and budget focus for those audiences. So there are my top three best practices that you should be using on your Google Shopping campaigns. And to help you and to make sure that you don't miss any of those optimization options that you've got for your Google Shopping campaigns, why don't you go through and grab my Google Ads Optimization Checklist. And this is a checklist which you can use for both search and shopping campaigns, which shows you the exact optimizations that you need to be completing on your campaign every 72 hours, every week, every month, and every 90 days. And if you wanna get your free copy, all you need to do is to follow the link in the description below and you can get yours straight away. Now remember at the start of this video, I did speak a little bit about Performance Max campaigns and how any smart shopping campaigns which you currently have in Google Ads will actually be automatically transitioning to Performance Max coming up this July. So if you wanna make sure that you've got your Performance Max campaigns set up correctly, I want you to go through and watch this video right here or if you've already got some Performance Max campaigns and you wanna know the optimization options that you can do for your Performance Max campaign, go through and watch this video right now. Once again, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in one of these two videos right now. See ya.